So John, it has been such fun to work with you these last four years. It has been a real pleasure. It's been an unforgettable time. And to work with the only person to have served as executive officer and then captain of Constitution in a 224-year history, what does that mean to you? I really have had the, the best opportunities in the last several years. Coming here as executive officer, I thought I had the best job in the Navy already. Little did I know that I could ascend to become the commanding officer of the 76th in our history. I have the best uh, crew, the 85 sailors that I get to work with to do this job. I'm really proud of the, what we've accomplished in a COVID year, a COVID couple of years. And uh, really, uh, it really worked out really well, I think, for what we were able to do virtually and able to reach uh, Constitution uh, fans and, and, and new virtual visitors over the last couple of years. It's been great. And to be someone who was raised in Massachusetts, to have visited this ship before, what does it mean to you and your family to come back and serve in this position? I One of the, the unintended benefits of this job is that I've gotten to get closer to my very extended family here in Boston. I was with my cousin just the other day, but my second cousins and third cousins, who I loosely knew, have all introduced themselves to me, and I've gotten to know them, and friends and family members, extended family. Uh, being local is not a prerequisite for the job, but it, it definitely helps to, to know the communities that you're trying to engage with. Uh, it makes it that much more fun and much more personal. So uh, my, my wife, my kids, my mother and father, my uncles have all got to enjoy this awesome opportunity with me the last couple of years. That is terrific. You are going to leave with many wonderful memories. I know there have been tremendous moments and there have been challenges. Why don't we take one of each? Tell us about a sure. challenge that you faced during your command. Well, the, the most obvious would be COVID. I did not see that coming. The change of command was February 29th. There were some people talking about this COVID thing, but I had no idea that two weeks later we would shut the ship down to general visitation. But because I have such a, a great crew who was, was ready to adapt and be able to accomplish our mission in just a new way, uh, we started immediately doing virtual stuff and, again, very proud of what we were able to, to do there. I had already knew... Uh, the challenges with running a command in general, but here, the Charlestown Navy Yard, a great history here with the 225-year-old ship. You get the 200-year-old buildings as well. So the everyday operations of our command are very much like what some of the CEOs on gray ships are experiencing out there uh, across the fleet right now. So some of the challenges I was expecting being a Naval officer, but uh, some definitely, like the rest of the fleet, did not see COVID coming. That has certainly been a challenge for yeah. all of us. But I have to say what you and the crew were able to do virtually to continue to give mm -hmm. daily tours, to reach out nationwide, still reach millions mm -hmm. of people, even though they weren't walking across sure. the decks here, sure. has been so impressive. That has been yeah. really a model from the museum perspective. It's been thrilling to us to see that example, to be mm -hmm. able to partner with you on some of those programs to reach school children yeah. as well has been fun. Actually, in 2021, uh, we were able to adapt again and get back to many of our in-person programs with the, the underways and able to do it safely, uh, uh, learning from COVID, what had happened the year before, what we could get away with, what we could do to keep people safe, visitors and the crew. So we did seven underway demonstrations in 2021. That's the highlight of my, of my time, uh, taking, taking the ship through Boston Harbor, feeling the wind crossing the decks, seeing smiles on our guests' faces to get this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. That really is uh, what has made it truly special. John, I have to tell you that being aboard Constitution, when we, you had the Medal of Honor recipients on board on a beautiful day in Boston Harbor to see that incredible flag with the Medal of Honor symbol float on Constitution's gaff was incredible. It is definitely going to be one of my best memories from 2021. When when Medal of Honor recipients come up to you and and shake your hand vigorously and thank you for everything that that you do for your country, it's it's extremely humbling to hear that from these heroes that we had on board. That will be uh, one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. So what other terrific memories do you have from serving aboard Constitution? This command is like no other. The opportunities that you have, what are some of the favorites in your mind? 
selfishly throwing out the first pitch at the Boston Red Sox game for the for the Yankees series was a was a highlight. Our our mission is promotion. So anytime we can uh, collaborate with the organizations out in the community that help tell our story through the uniform and through being present, uh, we take advantage of. And I was a beneficiary of some very cool things. Uh, back to the uh, the underway demonstrations. A couple of the other ones that were truly memorable were our recurring Vietnam War commemoration mm -hmm. collaborations, which we will continue to do for the rest of this. 10-year uh, anniversary of the 50th year since the, the Vietnam War. Uh, that's the least we could do to say thank you to these veterans that didn't get the thank you they deserved back then. Uh, the, the educators underway were through the museum and through the ship and the Navy. We reached out to all the educators in greater Boston area and nationally to come on board to get them fired about up about United States Navy history and then tell their students and maybe bring them back. That was definitely one of the highlights of my tour here. Uh, there's been many highlights. Well, a lot of cool stuff we've been able to accomplish uh, as a command, but also as a Charleston Navy Yard collaborator with the museum. And I heard you even got to fly with the Blue Angels. That is a close second, <laughs> and maybe it is the best experience. That uh, Another great collaboration, the, the CNO's two premier promotional commands, the Blue Angels and USS Constitution, were together on board the decks. We let the pilots and the maintenance crew give tours to, uh, to visitors to the ship and then be able to tell their own story about what they do. And then they invited me up to Maine to uh, get a backseat ride, which was extremely memorable and a lot of fun. It's good to be the CEO of Constitution. <laughs> it is terrific to have a CEO of Constitution like you who brings energy and enthusiasm. And we know that tradition will continue as the ship moves forward. Yes. I'm very uh, happy that my relief commander, BJ Farrell, is here. She's going to be outstanding and keep the momentum going of all the great things that the crew and I have, have started. That's wonderful. Now, there's a question that all of us who are not commanders of Constitution want to know, do, does the captain actually sleep aboard ship in the captain's cabin? I have not done it, truthfully. I'm a bit superstitious. I kept planning to do it, and the timing never worked out. But I will answer what some people have asked me about, do I feel the spirits when I'm walking around the ship? And that is 100% true. I do feel a, a, a very close kinship with the former COs living, and that have passed. There's only a handful, 76 of us, that can say that they were in command of our iconic warship. So when I'm walking around either with a full crew or full group of, of visitors or when I'm walking around at night uh, when it's empty, I can feel the spirit of all those captains and all those sailors. And it's, it's very humbling. It's very humbling to know how many sailors have crossed over on that deck in battle over the 33 naval battles that we've had. And it's something that uh, I'm very conscious of and want and have made a point to make all of our visitors know in all of my engagements with them. I must say, as one who has had the wonderful opportunity to meet a number of Constitution commanding officers, but the addition when the ship gets underway, when you have spoken about the ship being sacred ground, that mm -hmm. this is like being on a battlefield and remembering those who have served on the deck, that is a very poignant and powerful moment that you yeah. have been able to add to what are joyous and exciting occasions, but offer that perspective, that bigger picture of why yep. we're here and why the ship is so important to us. I've tried. You balance it all. It's a, a humble, but also a celebration that uh, we are still here 225 years later, our longevity, and uh, our, that we're a beautiful ship, and that we represent the Navy's core values. It's all, uh, it's all good stuff. And tell me a little bit about your crew, because you also speak sure. very eloquently about the crew. Sure. We have 85 active duty sailors. We have the best sailors in the fleet. I could say that because they were handpicked by me uh, <laughs> from a large pool of other great sailors. And the sailors that we want here in Constitution are sailors that are of high character, but passionate about history and passionate about each other, passionate about their experiences from the fleet and bringing those experiences here to uh, to tell the public we really don't want to just tell the story of constitution we want to tell the story of the 330,000 sailors across the fleet and what they're doing and then we want to tell people why we've joined the navy and a little bit about us so uh, the mission is is even greater than than just keeping the spirit of old ironsides alive it's about uh, rem remembering and recognizing the people that are still serving in harm's way right now 
Well, as you reflect back on your career, both EXO and CEO, is there anything that you wanted to do that you weren't able to do? There are two things that I wanted to do. I wanted to do a, a simulation of a broadside here with pyrotechnics that we never got the opportunity to do, uh, a la HMS Victory did one mm. uh, a few decades ago. Uh, our tide movements are uh, pretty restrictive with that big 12-foot uh, tide range. Um, I also submitted several proposals to the TV show Mythbusters that were not accepted. I wanted to prove that a live oak hull would would would, uh, would not allow a cannonball to penetrate the sides. Uh, they did not like my idea. They did not call me back. But uh, <laughs> I really can say that I've accomplished pretty much everything that that I wanted to do in all seriousness. I knew coming into the job, I had a long list and I was checking things off as we went. And uh, I think that I did everything that I set out to do. And I hope that the Navy's proud of what I was able to accomplish and the crew will, will remember me as a captain they were happy to follow. And I know that uh, I will be back and not very far and visiting BJ and uh, the ship and the museum for the rest of my life. But you have constitution in your blood. It really is forever. You are definitely a part of the Constitution family forever. But what's your next assignment? I am going to Navy Leadership and Ethics Command in Newport, Rhode Island, not very far, to teach the Navy's newest commanding officers and executive officers about potential pitfalls in the leadership and ethics world. It's a subject that's real interesting to me. So uh, I get to do that and still stay close to my beloved ship. Wonderful. A role model for future commanding officers. Yes. That's a perfect place for yes. you. And is there anything else that you'd like to share that I didn't get to ask you about today? Only that it's been a pleasure to work with the great staff of the USS Constitution Museum. Had a lot of fun in everything that we've done together. Also the National Park Service staff, Naval History and Heritage Command staff. Uh, we really work well together and the people, the civilians that are attached to the Constitution are as equally passionate about our ship as the sailors in uniform. And it, uh, it's just really been a blessing to meet everyone in the USS Constitution Museum, overseers, staff, trustees. Uh, I will miss that part of the job immensely. But you're always welcome Thank to come you. back and be Thank part you. of the Constitution Museum family as well. Right. So while we may say farewell, it's only temporarily. It's to bring you back into the family in a different form. Sure. So. Thank you, Ann. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you, John.